Okay, two more questions. I could do this all night, and I know you could, but they got to close this joint up at some point. Also, in advance, I have to apologize for the fact that, because there are 65 gajillion people here, um, thank you for, I got it. You'll be, you'll be last. No pressure. Back there. Okay. But because there are 65 gajillion people here, the signing will have to go relatively fast, but um, it will still be awesome. Uh, I'm so happy. <laughs> like made my life. I mean, this is so great. Um, happy dance. I hope so. I will, I will at the end of the show. It's not going to be possible with the, uh, on the chair. Okay, you're fine. Yeah. Well, this is for my mom. She wasn't able to be here. Um, but it's from Looking for Alaska. And uh -huh. she's wondering how, like, you captured how they, like, like, dealt with the death of Alaska? No, it's okay. The question is how... That's okay, I don't even believe in spoilers, actually. Um, <laughs> the problem. But the question is how the characters... Um, how I captured how characters deal with loss and grief. I wrote Looking for Alaska after I'd been working for six months at a, as a chaplain at a children's hospital, which will teach you a lot about how people confront loss and grief and how um, uh, profound and ubiquitous... Um, uh, grief is in the lives of people after they've experienced loss. That was in Columbus, Ohio, where I was on Monday, and it's been many years since I worked there. It's been probably eight or ten years, and yet uh, still, like, I drive into that city on, on that highway, and I uh, burst into tears as I did driving away every single day. And I think it was that time made me think so much about uh, these questions of can we find... Uh, can we find meaning in a world that is inherently unjust? Can we uh, find a way to go on with life 